Hello, my name is Neil Bendel. I'm an Associate Professor of Marketing at the Ivy Business School in Canada. What I want to talk about today is the problem of accounting for marketing. Uh, financial accounting rules do a rather poor job of accounting for marketing at the moment. Just look for brands and you will rarely find anything approaching uh, a true level of a brand or a balance sheet. To be fair, this, this is because um, accounting for marketing can be very, very challenging. And there are a number of times where it's just not clear what number should be put in. And today I'm going to talk about the problems accounting for marketing. Um, so firstly, the idea of there's a problem that accountants talk about a lot, which is revenue recognition. This is essentially trying to decide when to book are you put into the accounts uh, revenue. Now, there might be all sorts of reasons why managers might want to manipulate this. They might want to look better now, they might want to save some money for the future, this sort of thing. So that managers sometimes have an incentive to mess around with this. And accounting rules essentially try and stop them from doing this. So it will give you quite clear rules on when to account uh, for things like discounts, that sort of thing. Now, these can often mean that the accounts are not actually representing the true state of affairs, uh, but uh, representing uh, what's you know a convention based on what you're allowed to book and when you're allowed to book it. Another major problem that occurs is bad debts and rebates. Uh, these are things where uh, you know someone's promised to pay you, uh, but you never quite know whether they are until they do. Um, so uh, financial accounting rules allow you to put in. Indeed, the matching principle suggests that you should put in uh, the revenue when it's generated. But of course, if it's never repaid it really hasn't been generated and so there's all sorts of rules about what to do. What accounts that solves this problem is by putting into themselves bad debt provision. Essentially they suggest that some bills are just never going to be paid and so they take off the value uh, of those bills. How do they know what bills are going to be never going to be paid? Well they don't really. They come up with an estimate. So one of the points I want to sort of make is that accounts already have a number of estimates on them. Uh, when people talk about how difficult it is to put uh, marketing numbers onto the accounts, they're, I mean, they're quite right. But um, that doesn't mean that estimated numbers aren't already there. Um, and so, you know, you can always talk about the benefits of estimated numbers versus the uh, clear uh, problem with estimates being wrong. And rebates is very similar. Uh, you know, will, will customers actually claim the rebates or not? And another interesting problem is the idea of customer loyalty programs. Uh, these essentially give points uh, to customers and in return um, uh, when the customer comes in they can cash the points they can collect a prize you know traditionally that might be a flight or something like that but also all sorts of things you can get um, now how do you account for that well the problem is that um, these are vital marketing tools but uh, accounting rules tend to encourage you to recognize your liabilities to customers so when you know you, we owe the customer a flight but they don't tend to recognize the value of the points often, um, you know, uh, to the company that's generating them. And so you get this bizarre thing where uh, a lot of customer loyalty programs look as though they're losing a lot of money when they don't necessarily be doing so. Another problem is accounting for R&D. Obviously, research and development R&D is quite uh, similar in some ways to marketing and the fact that you do a lot of work and then hopefully it pays off. And in, in you know, often it does, but you're never quite sure when and how and what exactly it's going to pay off. So it breaks into two different types. So it'd be more of applied R&D, which is pretty much getting the product over the line to, um, to get it finally out to the customer. And basic R&D, which is much earlier stage, which is a bit more speculative. Generally, you're allowed to account uh, for applied R&D as creating an asset, but not basic R&D. And in some ways, if you kind of look at it as marketing in a similar sort of way, Research and development scientists might actually have similar similar problems to marketing about the ways that uh, their work is accounted for in financial accounts. One thing that's also a problem with changing marketing account uh, the values of marketing assets in the accounts is they change over time, but the accounts are very reluctant to change them, partly because it's hard to measure the differences. Um, and so, uh, pragmatic concerns suggest you often put a number in there, but you leave it the same as it sort of has been for forevermore. And this can lead to some pretty bizarre numbers, uh, which are historical numbers about what, um, a, say, a brand might have been bought for. It doesn't really bear any relationship to what the brand's worth now. And of course, always remember that when you see asset values, they're as at a certain date. So if the account's worth 39, uh, 31st of March 2019, the accounts are as of the 31st of March 2019. If you're reading them in 2020, 
later in 2019, the numbers might be very different. Overall, the summary is it's very hard to account for marketing. Um, we have sympathy with uh, some of the problems that financial accountants have, but we think there's ways you can improve.